Hey everybody, I'm Cheryl and I am the Carb Addiction RD. In order to maintain my dietetics license, I period periodically have to take continuing education courses. And I recently had the opportunity to try the new Dexcom Continuous Glucose Monitor, the G7, um, which works for 10 days. And so I thought that I would at the same time take a course on understanding all of the data that you get from these devices, so a data interpretation course. And it was really, really cool to have my own data at the same time as all of those charts were being explained to me in that course. So I did some fun things. Obviously, I tried some different carbohydrate foods and different exercises just to see how I respond or my blood glucose, how that responds to these different things. And I really urge you to try using one of these or a similar glucose meter yourselves just to see how you respond to those different challenges. Because let's face it, we're all different. I can tell you how I respond to a certain food or workout, but it could be very different from how you respond. So I urge you to try the experiment for yourself. You'll, you'll learn so much. But in the meantime, you can listen to this little video and I'll describe what happened to me under a few different circumstances. If you are only listening to this, I urge you to maybe watch it as well because I will describe some of the curves as best as I can, but if you can see them visually, you'll probably learn a little bit more from my presentation. Okay, so during my 10 day test period, I did eat a few carb rich foods to see how I responded, but I was really surprised that my highest glucose spikes were actually from exercise. On Friday mornings, I do a pretty intense workout in the fasted state. Here you can see my glucose response. I started at nine and quite quickly, my liver started pumping out glucose to support energy demand, peaking at 182 milligrams per deciliter from a baseline of 77 then returning to baseline about an hour later. The next experiment I did was in response to a paper I had read titled On the Metabolism of Exogenous Ketones in Humans, published in 2017 by Brianna Stubbs et al. I have done a lot of research into exogenous ketones and am a big fan of using them in the right circumstances. This study examined the effects of two different doses each of ketone esters and ketone salts on blood levels of ketones, glucose, free fatty acids, and triglycerides. Here you can see the increase in blood ketone levels produced in response to the different beverages. The two types were dosed at either 12 or 24 grams of beta-hydroxybutyrate. In all cases, a rise in blood ketones was measured with the most dramatic increase observed with a higher dose of the ketone ester. Next, we see the effect on blood glucose levels in response to the different ketone formulations and doses. The greatest, but less dramatic drop was again observed with a higher dose of the ester, which caused glucose levels to decrease from 5.7 millimoles per liter to 4.8 millimoles per liter one hour after consumption. These units may be confusing if you're used to glucose being reported in milligrams per deciliter. To convert, you simply need to multiply by 18, which informs us that the glucose levels dropped from 102.6 to 86.4, which is a 16% decline in circulating glucose. Man, oh man, did this intrigue me. So I had to do an experiment to test this on myself. So I didn't copy the experiment, mostly because, well, it's already been done. But I did want to test the hypothesis uh, as to whether the presence of ketones can decrease blood glucose. So my experiment, my rules. Anyway, because my glucose typically runs lower than 100, I wasn't even sure if I would really detect that 16% drop. So I decided to see if the presence of ketones would prevent or at least minimize my blood glucose rise in response to a carb challenge. The brand of ketones that I recommend for people is the HVMN product Ketone IQ. Um, they have a discount code that you can get in the show notes if you want to try the experiment yourself. Um, they do come in two different doses. They have a shot glass and then they have this multi-serve bottle, which is what I used. If you use this, a single dose is 35 milliliters, which delivers 10 grams of beta-hydroxybutyrate. Arguably, this is a little bit low than the dose they used in the paper, but I wanted to become to, to use the dose that they recommend, and I figured it was close enough that I should at least get some interesting results. At 7.30 in the morning on a day I didn't exercise or eat or drink anything, my glucose was 76 and my ketones were 0.7. 
I realized that this ketone level is not insignificant for a baseline number, but that's what I had, so I proceeded, hoping the comparisons would still be interesting. At 7.45, I drank a can of Coke and watched my glucose spike to a high of 168 35 minutes later. Then, an hour and a half later, it was pretty much back to baseline. I waited another hour to make sure that my glucose was steady, then drank 10 grams of ketones. One hour later, my glucose was 85 and my ketones were 1.7, so I drank another Coke. This time, my glucose peaked at 161 and the area under the curve looked a little smaller, suggesting that perhaps the higher ketones were suppressing the glucose response. This was really exciting. Next, I waited until my glucose returned to baseline again, then had 20 grams of ketones. I was disappointed that ketones only rose to 2.5, so I drank another 10 grams at 4.30 p.m., which did bring up my ketones to 3.1 an hour later. So I had my third Coke of the day. Blech. This time, my glucose peaked at 159 with a larger area under the curve and an extended period of time to return to baseline. It was interesting that throughout the third glucose excursion, my ketones remained elevated, peaking at 3.6 an hour and a half after drinking that third Coke. Here you can see the overlay of the three Cokes I drank and how the curves compare. I'm not actually sure what it means, to be honest. Maybe some of you really smart listeners out there have some ideas. But I will say that in this experiment, exogenous ketones did not appear to dampen my glucose response unless the most bang for the buck occurs at 0.7, which was my starting point. I think I need more data. If anyone wants to try it and let me know your results, that would be really cool. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this as interesting as I did and that you're excited to do your own experiments to see how you respond to different types of exercise and foods. If you're interested in testing exogenous ketones, again, you can purchase them using the link in the show notes below to get yourself a great discount. Thanks again, and hey, happy ketone and glucose monitoring out there, everybody.